You must understand what we're talking about. <laughs> you like how me trying to listen to two Chinese talk, you know. In your language, when you follow Jesus, because the same language, the same word, the same spirit. Amen. The same vision. When you follow the Lord. And you know it. And you know it. Don't take you around or listen, you turn on the radio or whatever. And that kinship is there. It don't take long for you to know who it is, what they are. You can hear that. You can hear that voice. You can hear that eagle cry. Praise God. If you if you if you're an eagle, you can hear that eagle cry. You know, it's like that farmer that got that egg and put it under the hen. And that hen hatched that egg. Just because it sat under a hen, it wasn't a hen. A chicken, it was an eagle. And put that chicken, that eagle, that chicken pen, and he tried to conform everywhere he knew how. But he couldn't. I mean, he couldn't change his. He couldn't change his effort that much. He's too big, growing too fast, wings is too, too pretty, too beautiful, different color, his wings, and where God put him together, just, just amazing. Where he puts an eagle together. And I can see that old eagle down there trying to, because he's born, sort of adopted, you know. He's born on that hen. But you know what was different about him? He come from a different species, a different seed. And that's why the Lord likened us as an eagle. They that wait upon the Lord. So either strength is your mouth, but wings like a chicken. No, he said an eagle. Oh, the chicken is limited. The eagle's not limited. Can we say amen? Uh, you know, uh, uh, religion limits you. You know, Jesus turns you loose and lets you fly. Come unto me. Lord, become like me. Grow up to be like me. I am your example. Amen. You know, Jesus had the spirit without measure, didn't he? Thank you, Jesus. He had the spirit without measure. And the Bible said he didn't think that Robert would be equal with God. And Paul said we, we might know him, the height, the depth, the breadth, that we might know him in all of his fullness. You know, it's such a privilege for Jesus to be who he was and who he is and still tell us that we can in fact he told one place he said he that believeth on me and the works I do shall he do in greater works than these as I go to my father amen, amen. And, it, it, and you think almost scary for him to tell you something like that praise God and I, I, I count it a privilege today to be yes. called yes. to this great honor. Amen. Don't you? Amen. I said to be given this great honor. Yes. Jesus is telling me, son, come on. You can be like me. Read about me in the Bible and you can be like me if you want to. I've called you into the body of Christ. Yes. Amen. Amen. I've called you to be a member yes. of my body. My kingdom. And you grow up, the finished work is going to be a body of people, a church without spot and without blemish or wrinkle. Like Jesus. And we're just going to get like that. It's going to get God. I'll tell you what, He's going to bring us where we're supposed to be if we keep going. And I want to keep going, don't you? I don't want to stop, I don't want to rebel. I want to keep going. I want to finish. I want to be a part of that finished work in, in the body. And when it comes to its completion, to its fullness. He said, he said in the church, first apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Until we all come into the unity 
of the faith and of the stature and the knowledge of the Son of God into a perfect man. Can you say amen? amen. How many wants to be a part of that finished work? Yes. That when God gets through, you want to be there and the through. Amen. And Jesus said it's finished, didn't he? For our salvation and healing and completion. And it's all done. All the Bible we see from, from the foundation to the finish. Can you say amen? amen. Glory to God. Now he's going to finish it in us. I said he's going to finish it in us. Complete it in us. We've got to grow up into completion. Paul said we are complete in him. It's all in Jesus. You're going to find it nowhere else. It's all in Jesus. Jesus is the word. Made flesh. And he made it in the word where we could eat his flesh. If it was just the natural flesh, They'd eat him all up. We wouldn't have got none. But how many knows his flesh is his word? His word is the flesh. And his written word. God wrote it and got it to us. And then when we read it, it's like the five loaves and two fish. You put all that, giving it out to a world, billions and billions of souls, it's like five loaves and two fish. But when we pray and seek God and empty ourselves out, prepare ourselves and let him increase in us and fill us with the Holy Ghost, then, then that, when that word comes out of us, he multiplies it. Like the fish and loaves. Jesus said, uh, they said, give them to eat. He said, Lord, let me now hang in three days. If you better follow us three days. Well, it's three days they haven't eaten nothing. And they had to go back it had been three more days, make six days, when they hadn't eaten nothing. There's women and children. And you get a bunch of children that haven't eaten nothing in three days. I, I, I mean, but you know, I, I believe that, I'm not saying to what some natural going on, sir, but I believe the presence of God, and I believe that word of God, this just was hovering over that place and that glory is so strong. Uh, until they were able to do it. Probably a lot of them come to the place they didn't realize they was at home. Amen. How many has ever been in church and staying all day and praying and day just pass off and, and then when you come back to yourself and sit down, you say, I didn't realize that that hunger. No, you was in the presence of God. He fulfills all things. I said he fulfills all things. In us. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But when Jesus said, we don't have enough to take 200 pennies worth to, to, to feed all these folks. There's 5,000. The Bible said men beside the women and children. Amen. Could have been 20, 25,000 people. No doubt. And Jesus said, what do you got here? They said, we got a little lad's lunch. All right, mm -hmm. Five loaves and two fish. Go ahead. What is that? <laughs> what is that to, to all these folks? Amen. That's what they said. But what is that? And I'm sure if they didn't have the faith they needed, when Jesus said, give ye them the set them down, I'm sure their minds went to the world and said, what in the world is fixed to happen now? Probably some of them wasn't worried. Well, I know what he's he going to do something. I am. I ain't worried. That's about like Jesus said, y'all. They said, why do your disciples don't fast? He said, you know how? He said, when the bridegroom is with the bride, said, she don't have to fast. But when he's taken away, then they shall fast. <laughs> and then saw so many miracles. Until when Jesus said it, they just done it. They knew it was going to happen. Hallelujah. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. But well, what are what, what, what we going to do now? Probably some of them around us said, what is he going to do now? Tell them to sit down. you got five loaves and two fish. And those are when Jesus is there, when revival is going on, and the Holy Ghost is, and that's why people get excited. That's why they hurry up and get ready early. 
and get ready. Well, way up, what you getting ready so early? I, I'm just getting ready for church. Make sure I ain't late. I want to get me a seat. And I believe those days are coming back. We got them here, there, and yonder. But I believe those days, you know, way back in the 40s, when, when God visited William Branham and you begin to raise up, I believe there's over 200 preachers that went across this country. They said they would come to them old meetings, 7 o'clock in the morning, line up, and the doors weren't going to open to 6 at night. You know, they do that on, on Black Friday. They started some of them a week early. Save $100. Man, I wouldn't stay on the street for a hundred dollars for a week, sleep in the streets for a hundred dollars. That is it now. I wouldn't sleep in the streets for a hundred dollars a night. I know I wouldn't sleep. I'd be standing up or just the wall, fanning myself, stay away, looking like just my back to one of them concrete walls. You know how you do in a town now in a parking lot. Bunch of light, look over the back seat. That man I got a key and got down. Sometimes I saw the feet on there. Yes. Yeah. Somebody had to grab my legs. Now we're going to my legs. I give it to them. Yeah. But you know, people are so hungry just for sale. They don't know Jesus. They don't know the real Jesus. But there's one time in this country and other countries, there's still some spots and places. That, that still some hunger folks out there. there. There's a harvest that God has preserved for the last day. I believe that. He showed that to me. A harvest that he has preserved. They're not contaminated with religion. But to the world, they're a lost cause. But to God, they're the harvest. And those that the one that came to Jesus was always folks. The one that came to David, the Bible said David's army had 400 men that came to him out in the wilderness. They weren't the best of the best. They weren't good upright citizens. They were crooks. And people running from the law couldn't pay the bills. Out there running from the law in the, in the wilderness. Praise God. Bloodhounds out. They gathered up to David. David didn't have no men with him. But these kind of folks gathered up to David. He took them crooks, folks running with the law, 400 men. And you know what he started doing in men? He began to fight the battle of the Lord. He began to fight God's battle. Same thing. God trying to gather up the crooks. Some of these goody goody two shoe folks. Praise God. Looking down on everybody so sane, so so Pentecostal, until they messed up, so religious. Y'all gonna take these crooks and drug headed harlots out the streets. They're coming in. This is gonna make up the arm of the Lord. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! And the battle of the Lord is gonna be fought. I said the battle of the Lord. We're gonna take the land. We're gonna take the land. If it's just this one of these, you gotta have a degree. Can't never be locked up. Gotta have a good resume. Hallelujah. You don't have to come fill out an application to join this army. You don't have to have a, a, a degree to join this army. Come like you are barefooted, raggedy, bushy headed, something wrapped in a croaker sack, broke. The law looking for you. Come like you are. You are welcome. You are welcome in this kingdom. 
You're welcome in this church. You're welcome. Hallelujah. If you want to be real, you're welcome. If you really want to change, you're welcome. If you really want something real, you're welcome. Come as you are. Come. Come. Nobody look down on you. Nobody who's going to be left can't point no finger. Looks like all these uppers is going to be gone anyhow. And who's left can't point no finger no how. Because if they straight, they ain't always been straight. They ain't always been straight. They were crooked one time. So, so they're just glad you're here because they made it. Oh, that's my buddy. That's my old buddy. Oh, look at yonder. Uh, my God, look who's sitting over yonder. And the whole church is full. The whole army, hallelujah, is full. Thank God, hallelujah. Not made up of uppity folks. Uh, folks too good to look it down on the nose of people. It's made up of folks uh, that ain't had nothing, that lost it all. Thank God, amen, they ain't got nothing to look to. And then when they see Jesus, and they see this great Lord, and their hope is restored, their life is restored. Amen. The heart is restored. I got to catch and feel this life. He's living, folks. This is what's going to reach the world. It's alive. And nobody can just stand up on Come on, preacher. I've been telling y'all for years. When this real revival comes, you gotta be in shape to handle it. This anointing takes it out of you. You gotta take care of your temple. Amen. I mean, they can say this stuff. This is a treasure. This thing is a treasure. The Bible said, no, you're not. You're the temple of the Holy Ghost. Don't defile that temple. It said, him that defiles that temple, God will destroy Whose temple you are. We're God's temple. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. But this army, this kingdom is going to be made up of people that didn't have no hope. But most of the time when people come to Jesus now in this whole world, if they got anything, they don't want it. They want some church. They want some religion that has got a little bit. They're looking for gymnasiums and ball teams. Inside swimming pools. When folks go to town look for churches, that's what they look for. They don't look for praying folks, fasting people. Folks that let God have his way where the gospel and the word of God's preached without compromise, where the whole counsel of God is declared. Hallelujah. That's what we gotta have to survive. Men will not be able to survive in these end times unless the whole counsel of God is being declared. He's going to need the whole book. Eat the whole scroll. Sweet to your mouth, but bitter to your belly. That anointing brings it forth. It just sweet, tears you up. But when it hits down, you start living it. It gets a little tough sometimes. But you can make it. I said you can make it. God didn't give us something impossible to do. He lived in himself. Jesus lived it. He's our example. He lived it without sin. You hear me? Jesus walked through this world tempted as we are tempted and lived without sin. 
Not one time did he ever see it. No God was ever found in his mouth. Not once. The Bible said he became the author and the finisher of our faith. He hung on the cross. I heard his voice this morning. And he said, it is finished. When he hung his head on the cross, he said, it's finished. It's like throughout all ages. I could hear that voice. It is finished. And the first man that ever been born to the last one that will be born is going to cover them too. Salvation in the blood of Jesus is for all generations. For all humankind. Whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Oh, we have hope today. Look up. Grab another limb. I said, grab another limb. You ain't going to get to the top till you start climbing. Got to use them hands and feet. I said, you got to grab another limb. Don't be discouraged. The battle is great, but grab another limb. Climb a little high. There's a top to this mountain. I said, there's a top to this mountain. There's a finish line to this race. And it's going to be worth the journey. It's going to be worth the run. Yes. Everything we go through or do, it'll be worth it. It'll be worth it. So don't give up. Don't look for something easier. Don't think it's too tough or too hard. And you say, man, it ain't too hard. Thank you, Jesus. I'll tell you what scripture said. He said the way of the transgressor is what's hard. Yes, amen. To be bound today is what's hard. Yes. To be bound on drugs is what's hard. Yes. To be bound on alcohol today is what's hard. Amen. To be lost in sin is what's hard. Amen. To be out there in darkness and don't know where to go is hard. Yes. Be suicidal is what's hard. Yes. Can you say amen? Yes. But it ain't hard. Thank you, Lord. He said the way of the transgressor is hard. Thank you, Jesus. The way of the transgressor. He said my yoke is easy and my burden is light. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus said it's finished. Don't that give you hope? You're going to have to move into a house. They said, well, it's yours. There ain't no plumbing. And we didn't finish all the wires. Ain't no furniture in it. No appliances. Got a top on it and the walls. But it's got to be finished. Jesus, when it comes to salvation, deliverance, and healing the whole man, delivering the whole man from the curse of sin, it's finished. Yes. It's finished. And then Paul turned around and said, We are completing him. Yes. We are completing him. We grow up. He said, All the ministers in the church. Apostle Prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, for the perfecting of the saints, for the edifying of the body of Christ, until we all come into the unity. See, the church is coming in the unity. You know, I say, well, I know so and so ain't never gonna come. Yeah, he's gonna, if he's in this, he's gonna come in the unity. If he's in the kingdom of God, he's gonna come in the unity. I ain't got a bunch of bodies out here. There's thousands of different denominations, but ain't but one body. There's thousands of spirits, but ain't but one Holy Ghost. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. One God, one hope, one faith, one mediator between God and man. One spirit. The man Christ Jesus. 
There ain't no bunch of ways. There's one way. One way. And his name is Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man shall come to the Father except by me. I am the door to the sheepfold. You try to enter it in any other way. You're the same as a thief and a robber. You can't get in unless you come to the door. And Jesus is that door. He's that door to heaven. It's by him we enter in. It's through him we enter in. To all of the promises of God. In his name. In my name, he said, you shall cast out them. In my name, you'll heal their sin. Thank you, Jesus. In my name, you'll lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. It's all through Christ. It's all through his anointing. It's all through Jesus. The name the Bible said, there's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved other than the name of Jesus. For God has highly exalted him and given him a name that's above every name. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that he is Lord to the glory of God. Jesus said his sins. It's finished. We have hope today. Salvation has been paid for. Grab a hold of it. Hold on to your hope. I said hold on to it. Thank you Jesus. He's coming back one day. He's coming back. The Bible said the dead in Christ shall rise. And then the alive shall remain. You'll be caught up together. The dead in Christ shall rise first, and then the last remains shall be caught up. We'll meet him in the air together, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Yes. He has got all these coming. But he said, The dead in Christ shall rise first. He said, Wherefore, comfort one another. Comfort each other and tell them the days are coming, brother. Dead in Christ going to rise. Those that are alive and remain going to be caught up together with them in the air. And we're going away forever with Jesus. Into that place, into that city. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I said, in that city. Glory to God. How I many wants to go to that city one day? God gets ready. Get super you here. You want to go to that city? Thank you, Lord. But they're coming. The Bible said they'd come from the east and the west. So now the kingdom of heaven with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, didn't he? Amen. Children of the kingdom should be cast out. Out of darkness. Those old Pharisees, when John was baptizing at the river of Jordan, his message was repentance. The kingdom of heaven's at hand. His crowd was harlots and drunks. It wasn't them Pharisees and church folks and Sadducees and Herodians. It was people out in the streets. It was people unaccepted by society. But they begin to cry. And in that cry, now that the river of Jordan repent for the kingdom of the heavens at hand. Prepare to meet God. The kingdom of God's coming. The kingdom of God's at hand. Get yourself ready. Thank you, Jesus. Come down here and be baptized. In the river of Jordan, get your sins washed away. Prepare yourself to meet this man that's coming. The one that's coming, I need to baptize you in this water. But said the one that's coming is going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. Hallelujah. He's coming. I'm going to get you ready. He said, my job is to prepare you. My job is to get you ready. But there's one coming after me. He's mighty than I. I must decrease and he must increase. Hallelujah. I must decrease, John said. My days are coming. I won't be out here. I'm going to get in the background. Praise God, I'll lose my head. But he's coming on the scene because it's my job to prepare him to come. It's my job today to prepare you for the Holy Ghost, to prepare you for his coming, to get you ready for the kingdom of God.
Get you ready for God to use you. Get you ready for heaven. Get you ready for everything that God has for you. Come on. For you to repent. Where you get it, get repent. Where you get ready for it is to repent. I ain't just talking to sinners out there in the street. I'm talking to church sinners too. Repent. 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 Get ready. The kingdom of heaven's at hand. God's getting ready to move again. God's getting ready to pour out the Holy Ghost again. But you've got to get your vessel where you can hold it. He can pour out a Holy Ghost in the vessel that's got cracks. Amen. It ain't going to hold no water. Isaiah said, my people committed two evils. They first forsaken me, the fountain of living water, and said the vessels they prepared won't hold none. Are you listening to me? We got to prepare a vessel. Hallelujah. Through repentance. Empty out this vessel. We are that vessel. I said we are that vessel. My people committed two evils. They forsaken me. You can't forsake Jesus. You can't forsake the word of God. You can't forsake his word. You got to hold on to it. You got to believe it. You got to strive to enter into it. You got to believe it and love it and hold on to it. Amen. The kingdom of heaven is in hand. If you got the truth today and the spirit, one of the greatest things to have in you is the spirit of truth. The love for the truth. Amen. If you love the truth, it don't get too hard. It don't get, if it's truth, it's truth. Truth don't, ain't got no definition. Truth stands alone. It's just truth. And Jesus said, I stand alone in salvation. I stand alone in healing. He is our healing. He is our salvation. He is our deliverance. In his name, in his name alone, he stands alone. And all that we need in this generation, it's all in Jesus. stands alone. Call on him, whosoever. That's what John didn't, John didn't say. You know, it's going to all play out. If it ain't real, world's going to know it. People's going to know it. If you're real, they're going to know that too. going to know who's real. I know even Jesus got down and gathered out them twelve disciples. As I called you twelve, said one of you are dead. He had to be filled out. Hallelujah. God's going to fill this thing out. There ain't but one way. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you not to get filtered out, is to get with them to get rid of your sins. Repent. The kingdom of heaven's at hand. God can't pour the Holy Ghost out in a vessel that's broken. Amen. That a vessel that's cracks that can't hold no water. I'm not talking about your spirit broken. We need a broken spirit. I'm talking about your body. I'm talking about your soul. I'm talking about, amen, you not being broken. He said, my people committed two evils. They forsaken me, the fountain. The first thing you mess up is when you forsake the truth. You forsake the word of God. You start looking for something easy. You start going somewhere searching for something else. It's got a, they got a gym over here. They, they, they got programs for the children. But have they got the word of God? Oh, they got a ball team. But do they, do they pray? Do they pray all night? Do they, but they got they got a swimming pool. But do they they shut in and fast and pray? Do they still preach the truth? Let me tell you, there are a lot to offer in religion. But I'm telling you, thank God they can't compare with Jesus. I said Jesus is all of it. They can't compare with the glory and the power and the miracles. All of this can't save one person. All these programs, all these ball teams can't heal one headache. Amen. It can't open one blind eye. But just in the name of Jesus and being a part of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. You too, as a member of the body of Christ. Hallelujah. You'll be glad you helped. You'll be glad you stayed with Jesus. You'll be glad.
the hope of glory. His message was repent. The kingdom of heaven is in hand. Thank you, Lord. I baptize you with water. But there's one coming after me. Who's mighty tonight? Whose shoes are not worthy to back. He, when he comes, he'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost and that fire. See, they, 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 they probably would have received the man if it was been Elijah, they, because they were waiting on Elijah. They probably received him. But see, God camouflaged him by another name. He was Elijah. He come, brother of the Bible said he come in the spirit of power of Elijah. He was John, but his spirit was Elijah. Spirit of power that was in him was the spirit of power of Elijah. And he no doubt would have come trying to pat on himself or look like Elijah. They didn't come to him and said, Who are you? Ah. You're Elijah, he said, no. You, you, you're the Christ, he said, no. Who are you? So tell us something. We can go back and tell these folks. They're all asking us down here at the church. They want them to come, but they want to know who you are. Who you with. Who's you affiliated with. People are so full of religion. So that's the first question they ask when they come around. You know, I don't spot them over outfits. Got my tent up somewhere and there you come. There's somebody want to talk to you. I looked through the window and I said, oh, no. <laughs> the first person they asked you, who are you feeling? What do you believe? See, they don't have no spirit to discern a, 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 a kinsmanship. So they do it all by religious theology. Who you with? Some with Jesus. But, but I mean who you with. I said, I mean them with Jesus. I know we're all with Jesus. Yeah, we are. We ain't got enough. If we're all with Jesus, that ought to be enough, brother. Y'all say, Hallelujah. I'm with you. Yeah. 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 That ain't enough. And I don't always give them what they want. Yeah. Yeah. All the time they leave shaking their head. Like I'm dealing with a fool. And I'm thinking, I ain't as crazy as you think. I know who I'm with. You just don't know who you is. I know who I'm with. You're the one that don't know who you is. Because if you ain't with Jesus, you're of the devil. If you ain't with Jesus, you're of the devil. Jesus told him Pharisees, he said, you're the fa your father is a devil. Man, that's rough to tell them folks had their robes on. They looked like saved. They looked like everything was big old Bibles. You know how somebody first gets saved, they want to get one of the big old family Bible. That's all right. Ain't nothing wrong. I'm just, you know, somebody first saved, they didn't want the world to know. They say, man, ain't nothing wrong with that. Your baby, you're young, that's all right. Yeah, you're going to two family bottles. That's all right. Put one on your head and two in your hand. You want the world to know. You say. Just, just tell them it ain't enough. You want them to see that big Bible too. Family Bible. I said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, thank you. They don't want to let you buy with that, but, but I mean who you with, what denomination. I said, not one. Not one. 
You ain't with no, you ain't feel like with no denominations. I said, feel like with Jesus. They call, they call people like us renegades. You know who them renegades was? Them that came out that day. Them 400 men. Running from the law. You may not be running from the law right now, but before it's over, if you stay with Jesus, all of us going to be running from the law. The law going to be looking for us all. Because we ain't going to be in the bow to the mark of the beast. We're not going to be in the bow, which will be the law of the land. It's farther than you think. We're farther along than you think. And this is God giving us now is strength and knowledge and wisdom and revelation to know when we are there. That's why Jesus said, they spoke about Jesus, said when he comes, he's not going to judge for the seed of the eye or the hearing of the ear. Brother, we got to put the blindfolds on and put earplugs in. No one by the Spirit. No you by the Spirit. No God by the Spirit. When he comes, he won't judge. But the sin of the eye. You know that's what people judge by? What they see? You don't know the hell that person's been through. If you knew what they've been through, you might run to them and say, Oh, my brother. Come on, let me strengthen you. Instead of judging that he's had, actually. He may be in such a battle that you ain't never been in. You don't know. He may be going through hell in the high water. He may be going through something you, you don't know about yet. But if you condemn him before two weeks, you may know him. In your mind, to go back and you on your knees, you cry, and you say, Oh, Lord. I wish God have went and helped that poor brother. I just didn't know this existed. I didn't know this kind of hell existed. I didn't know this kind of fight and battle existed. Let me tell you the fight and the battle that we go through will take judging out of you. It'll take condemning others out of you. If you can just help them along the way. Oh yes. I'm going to preach the word just like the word is. But I have no personal condemnation for nobody. I have no personal condemnation for you or nobody else. I'm here to help you. I'm called to preach the word. I'm called to lay hands on you and to help you and strengthen you and turn you to the right source and give you some water from this rock and give you some of this manna that's falling in my soul. That's this manna that God's putting inside of me. Praise God. I'm going to deliver to you this bread of life, this river of life that's flowing. Hallelujah. This is the only thing to heal you. Condemnation ain't going to heal nobody. It takes the word. You've got to give them a drink of water. you got to give them some bread. you got to give them some hope, folks. We beat folks down too much. It's time to lift them up. It's time for hope. Just say amen. Yeah. Lift your hands and give me praise. But you don't love somebody else's self. 
The Bible said, love your neighbors yourself. Love the Lord thy God with all your soul, heart, mind, and strength. We need to be saying today, God, fill me with your love. You ain't going nowhere with God. If you don't get filled with his love and compassion, you can't operate in the gifts. You can't preach the gospel like it ought to be preached when your heart ain't full of compassion and full of love. Jesus was a man full of love and compassion, but he also was full of power. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. He could speak to the waters. He was the most humblest man. He was a lamb, but yet he was a lion. I said he was a lamb in humility. But when it comes to fighting the devil and battling, he's a lion. He's king of beasts. Oh, he's the king of kings and lord of lords. He's the lion of lions. All the lions and the fires know who Jesus is. All the devils in hell and the demons is turning loose on the face of the earth knows who this lion is. And they know he's got a name. And his name is Jesus. And when you start calling that name and preaching that name, those demons and diseases and infirmities and devils and fears begin to back up. They can't stay in the presence of God. That's why we got to be real. We won't be able to do the work of God. Send God get this hate out. Amen. Amen. Get this prejudice out. Amen. Amen. No matter who you are, nobody's got no excuse to have prejudice in their heart. That ain't the love of God. All people's got some kind of prejudice. You say, Oh, they prejudice. Yeah, you too. But check your heart. You think come folks when you look at it. Better change, better get on the phone and altar and say, take this out. This ain't God. Fill me with the love of God. Fill me with the love of God for all of my brethren. For all of the world. The Bible said, for God so loved the world. Where do you stay? For God so loved the world. Where do you stay? You want to be one of his vessels. You ought to be one of his ministers. But you've got to realize, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son he, to pay that price that whosoever believe in him, whosoever, all of his creation, believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world. Jesus didn't come to condemn you. I know this is far fetched from old Pentecostal religion. Jesus didn't come to condemn you. They live under condemnation. Everything they do is works. If you're dressing modest as works, you're dressing in vain. If you're singing, preaching as works, you preaching and singing in vain. I believe in your faith. He said, faith worketh by love. Right. <laughs> Jesus was full of it. And the fruit of the Spirit is the fruit of the Holy Ghost. People say, I got the Holy Ghost. You better check your fruit on your tree. It's more talking than talking. Some people jabber. Some, some folks got their soft taint. Some of them slap them on the jaw. They got it. But the Bible said the Spirit by the they speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. When the Holy Ghost come, it can speak and it will speak, and it knows how to speak. You don't have to teach it. It already knows. It speak every language to every man, every nation, every nationality, every culture. He got the language. He knows how to reach it all. He knows how to catch every fish. He knows what bait to put on your hook. Give you wisdom what kind of bait to put on your hook to catch that certain kind of fish. Because one kind of bait don't catch all fish. Are you listening? Hallelujah. Thank you. But he gives you wisdom. But when it all lines up, it's all Jesus. It's all Jesus on the hook. And Jesus will catch that soul. If you put him on the hook, 
if you'll preach the gospel, if you'll lift up the name of Jesus, if you'll tell a dying world, he lives, he lives, and it's finished. Oh, yes, it has been finished. Salvation has been finished. He finished it when he bared his head and said, it is finished. All ages, all people, all people from all times, all generations, that covers you. It covers us here today when Jesus hung there and bared his head and said, it's finished. You are covered under the your hands and say we are complete in Jesus it's all in him it's all in Jesus lift your hands up and love he's keeping you alive what's keeping you alive Is who? Jesus. Keeping me alive. You know, yes. catch your shit, but he keeps you alive. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. He keeps his fish alive. Yes. Hallelujah. You might think he's killing you sometime, Amen. but he's making you. Yes. He's molding you yes. in his image yes. and in his life. Go in all the world. Yes. Preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs, these signs shall follow. See, we're going to come into maturity of the signs, too. At the very, you know, I thought about the children's in faith and believing that the work is finished. 1965. Any of you probably read that book? The Indonesian Revival. 1965. And Presbyterian people were praying for revival. You know nothing about the Holy Ghost. It was like the Topeka, Kansas in 1905. They were praying for the Holy Ghost. And that was the first knowledge of the Holy Ghost being poured out in America. It was 1905. Speaker Candace in a college. They got to seeking God. The leader of that college left on a journey. He told them, said, why, why are we? He would have been thrown around among their teachings. He said, while I'm gone, he said, I want y'all to study. Your depth of study is the Holy Ghost for us today. And while he was gone, they started studying to peak of Kansas in a college. They come to the conclusion the Holy Ghost with us. And they started doing what they did. They started tearing and praying. Thank you, Jesus. And the time he got back, when he got back, a young girl that got the Holy Ghost. Evidence of speaking in tongues. Oh, she was speaking in them languages. The Holy Ghost come on her and she just started speaking. And all the rest of them, I'm sure, was just feel that one and baby because they started getting it. They started coming on the time he got back, it was such an uproar and God was moving, so he shut down the college and turned all his students into an evangelistic team. He hit the road. <laughs> oh, how many knows that the Holy Ghost can still shut down the college? Yeah. We haven't seen that in our day. Yeah. Not this country. Amen. But the Holy Ghost is coming back to us. I saw, I saw last week, last Saturday morning, in the vision I heard a voice. And I saw a man, he said, a man like unto John. A man like unto John was crying, preaching, repent. You know the Bible said, John come in the spirit of power in the book of Luke. John come in the spirit of power in Elijah. See, if, if, if when John was down there, let me go back to this. I get that. Cover a lot of things here.
when John come on his stool preaching the kingdom of heavens at hand all of his fathers his heart some drunks and they if he'd have come and said I'm Elijah because they was looking for Elijah to come they believed because Malachi said fourth chapter I would have sent Elijah the prophet from Fort Graydon and turn the day of the Lord come He'll turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, the children of the fathers. Turn them back to that faith. Turn their hearts back to the faith of our fathers. Back to God. That's what repentance is. We're turning back to God. Lest, he said, unless I smack the earth with a curse. See, this is about turning back to God. We have to come in the last days and things will be so bad. Um, they wasn't turning back to God, he'd smack the earth with a curse. Amen. Yeah. You know, God is God. You know how big God is? How easy he could smack this earth? He just turned one of them stones that dodge us. All right. One of them meteorites that dodge us daily. That spring from the storms on the sun. And then most of them burn up, but there's still thousands of millions of them out there. Amen. But he said, if they were to have, if he'd have come saying, I'm Elijah, they'd have believed him. But because, they said, who are you? You're Elijah? You, you, the Christ? No. Who are you then? They knew they was waiting. God knew what he was doing. He wanted them to know his spirit. He wanted them to Know his word. Right. And not just the name. Right. Know the name of Jesus always. But we know his spirit too. We know his word. Amen. John. If they didn't knew. That he was Elijah. The spirit of power Elijah. They would have come. He said who are you? Who are you that we. May. Tell him. He said, I'm just the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Somebody say amen. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his repent ye, he said. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But because he didn't say it was Elijah. Over in the 17th chapter of Matthew, there's on the mountain of transfiguration. He told him when, when Moses and Elijah appeared to Jesus and he glorified his body, shining, his face shining like the sun. Moses and Elijah appeared to him. And he said, You want to make a tabernacle? One for thee, one for Elijah, one for Moses. The voice spoke out, said, This is my beloved son here. Him. Yeah. And that, when he fell on the face, when he got up, well, Jesus was standing by himself. He said, Lord, well, God spoke to him of his decease. And there's going down the mountain. He said, Why then did the scribe say the last must come? He said, The last must truly come first and restore all things. Then he said, Elias has already come, but you didn't know it. John the Baptist came in the spirit of power of Elijah. And those hypocrites and Pharisees and Sadducees didn't know it. They didn't know it. He come and left. And they never know it. But that's what he said in Matthew. He said, but Elias must surely come first. In other words, there'd be a, a time and an end before the great and the terrible day. See, the coming of Jesus wasn't a terrible day. It was a wonderful day. The terrible days now. Amen. We're turning the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children to the fathers. He came and they didn't know it. They let him come and go. 
That's why we got to know it with the Spirit. To know who's among us. To know the Spirit that stands among us. Not by, he's my cousin. That's why they miss Jesus. Come on now. All some of them knew he was a carpenter down the road. They didn't know him no father. I played with him when he was a child. He's kin to me. I stayed all night with him. And as far as you can go, you can never receive the kingdom of God flowing out of that vessel. You can only see the flesh part. Jesus was man, but he was God. I said Jesus was man, but he was God. The Bible said in him dwelt all of the fools of the Godhead body. In him. There's God in Christ and Christ in you. Oh, what privilege it is that God has given us. We're somebody today. We're children of God. We're servants of the Lord. We're sons of God. Called into his work and his kingdom. I'm not saying it gives you a look down at everybody. It makes you like Jesus. And Jesus, Jesus did one way up here. He was among the people. That's where the ministry of Jesus is. Is down among the people. He walked in the streets. He walked among the people. He wasn't some big religious leader that you couldn't touch. He was available for you to touch. He's available right now. Whosoever would touch one place, he said, hey, he came and everybody touched him was healed. Oh, I know the woman from the issue of blood, but that ain't the only one that touched him. There might have been millions touched him. Thousands touched him. We know the story of the woman with the issue of blood, but another place that everybody that touched him was healed of whatever kind of disease they had. That same garment, that same robe, that same spirit, that same power is in this place today. If you can touch the hem of this garment, you shall and will be made whole. God in Christ, Christ in you. Can you hear what I'm saying today? Do you hear? Do you hear John? Do you hear Elijah? Oh, he's John the Baptist. But do you hear Elijah? They didn't even know who was standing among them. Even John said, there's standing one among you. But you talk about Jesus in that crowd, I believe, said, there's one standing among you, no, no, no. See, he was just bringing Jesus on at one time. And later on, he said, I must decrease. Yes, sir. Ah. Come on now. And he must increase. I must decrease. Come here, son. I must decrease. You said, and he must increase. You say that. That's what Jesus said about John. John was saying about Jesus. One sat among you, you know not all. I baptize with water, but when he comes, he's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And that would follow. His message was to introduce Jesus. And the Lord told me a while back, he said, there's been so much confusion, so much mingling, so much a lot of times people don't know what's right. But he said, there's coming a spirit and a ministry and an anointing is going to introduce Jesus again. The same Jesus to the world. He's the one that's already come. It's already finished. He's the one that died. You know the Jews, they're still waiting on him. They're over at the waiting wall.
One day they'll wake up. Hopefully. I believe they'll wake up one day and recognize. Elijah's already come. Jesus has already come and died. We're not, we've been waiting on something that was already here. And you know, if we ain't careful, we'll get in the same shape. We'll be waiting on something that's already here. We'll be waiting on something that's already here. And you say, me. Lift your hands up in there. Yes, God. But if John would have come and said, I'm Elijah, that all went after you. But he come to John the Baptist. But he came in the spirit and the power of Elijah. And his congregation wasn't the church, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, because they didn't know God. It was the harlots and drunks. God help us. Lift your hands and God help me. To know you. To know you. To know your spirit. Do you know that church folks just don't know Jesus? Because they won't receive the one that God sent. Say it now. Amen. It ain't who it is, it's what's in him. The man's name ain't important. It's the name that's in him. The name he's preaching. The gospel he's preaching. Elijah had already come. The Bible said, then, then they knew he was talking about, and he said, Elijah's already come. Y'all didn't know. Then they thought, oh, man. Jesus, have mercy on me. I knew there was something strange about that man. We are going to have to learn to receive each other by the Spirit. And not the flesh. Jesus said from henceforth, we know no man after the flesh. We've got to come to the place that we too can stand up and say from henceforth, Lord, I don't want to know no man. But you know what? As long as we know back to the flesh, we're going to find fault. We're, going to, we're not going to see the real thing in them. It's, it's just it, it's God's there. They may have a distance to go, but yet they suffer the work with you. We've got to know with the Spirit. I guarantee you are looking at each other different. You start looking at the spirit. Well, I'm not talking about compromise. I'm talking about knowing by the spirit. Knowing who your brother and sister is. Knowing the members of the body of Christ. Maybe they ain't had the privilege to hear what you heard or said. See, some people think everybody's preaching everywhere. Let me tell you, folks are starving to death everywhere. They whole cities. The people write to me and say, there ain't even a church I know nowhere to go to. Please tell me. You know anywhere I go in church. Because they don't taste it of the good word of God. They don't, they don't have that real water from Jerusalem, that well. You know, when David really got thirsty and he's out on the battlefield, he started along and said, Oh, if I could just get a drink of water from that old well. You know, those out there that's tasted that water from the well, I'm talking about that rock, that well, that Jesus well. I don't care where they go to church. Once you've ever sat under the real truth, felt the real anointing, real Holy Ghost, you know when it is and when it is. You might endure it. You might go on because they expect you to be there. You've got a little position. And you're just holding on to something that ain't there to hold on to. What did I say to you, brother? I'm not saying hurt nobody or try to hurt nobody. But what I say to you, my brother, my sister, run for your life. Run for your life. Don't put on, if it ain't there, don't try to put on and say it's there. Don't try to just go through the good motions. The good motion ain't going to deliver, ain't going to feed you. You've got to be fed. 
pulpits are closed all through this country because preachers don't want to think that they need help to. Preachers need to be fed. You got preachers dying that they're too big to come and sit in a little old building. Amen. You know, storefront. Or you're ashamed of me. I'm preaching Jesus. I'm preaching a bunch of folks that ain't ashamed either. You wouldn't be here before. Pray God give us if we if we, if we, if we need it, give us a good building. But I'm not in building. I'm not in there. That's good. If you need it. You get to the place. Time to build it. Build it. Time to buy it. Buy it. But it ain't about that. It's about the anointing. About the Spirit of God. I focus my attention on souls. I've had a lot of money packed. Ain't got much just a place to live in. And one automobile. All the rest belong to God. A lot of money has passed through my hands through the years, but I put it back. I haven't held on to it. I put it in the ministry. I've seen a lot of preachers put it in this cell, put it on this cell. Buy up this and buy up that. It's going to perish. My God, souls are dying. When I stand before God, I want to be done all. And after I've done this, still I can't done enough. All right. I feel like I ain't done enough. I tremble with God's money in my hand. You don't know. I don't play with it. Because I know I don't deserve nothing He gives me. I'm just thankful. I'm just thankful to be honored and to be chosen in the discretion. Can you say me? If you're looking for a big church and a big SUV and a big tent, I'm not saying I have goals in Jesus. But if that's what you're looking for, you might get that. But when you get it, you'll wake up one day and find out that that ain't what it is. It's the anointing. It's the love of God. And feel with Jesus. And feel with the Holy Ghost. Reach in the lungs. And if God puts it in your hands, praise Him for it. Give Him glory for it. But don't let this be your seeking. Let Jesus be the one you seek after and search for. It. And when you find Him, you'll find your completion. In Him, we're complete. The world may not look at you as nothing. In fact, the man Paul said we were counted as the scum of the world. You've heard people call folks scum. They don't scum. Paul said we're counted as the scum of the world. But you know what? What lived in Paul, <laughs> we still preach it today. Still bringing people in, still serving the church up. Still directing us, still shining the light on our path, still encourages us, still feeds us. Now that old scum that the world called. Didn't want nothing to do with it. Didn't want to associate. The high polluted and the high religious folks didn't want to associate. All he was educated. Paul could stand up side of the greatest. He was set at Gophetmagia's feet. He was the doctor of the law. He knew the law to the letter. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But he said, you know what? On the road to Damascus, when the light shined around me, and he turned me blind, I heard a voice. He said, Saul, his name was Saul then. Fair Saul, Saul. Why persecute us not me? He said, I'm Jesus. That changed his life. Turned him all the way around. Sent him in the other direction. He had a letter in his hand persecuting the Christian. Blindly, he said, Lord, what would you have me do? He said, go to a street called Straight. I'll tell you what to go away. Three days he was blind. He was blinded. He said, I could not see. 
for the glory of that life. Right. You don't blind him with that glory. That light was in you. are a light blind you. You didn't put a big light right in your eyes. You can't see nothing but light. He said, I could not see for the glory of that light. He was blinded by that great light. God was changing him, transforming him. Hallelujah. By his glory, by his spirit. Hallelujah. I'm going to persecute him. An old evil man. And after he got saved, got up down the road, he said, you know what? I found out I was chosen from my mother's womb. He chose me from my mama's womb. To reveal his son in me. That shows me that mean old folks out there is going to get saved. Yes, sir. God's done chosen. They're coming in. They're coming in. Don't, don't reach out to judge a person for what he's doing and what yes. he looks like. Just give him the gospel. Shine that light in his eyes. Shine that light in his eyes. Lead him to the altar. Shine that light in his eyes. If you've got that light, praise God. He's commanded us to shine it. Your lights of the world, the city set on a hill. Shine that light in his eyes. Blind him. Thank God. Let him be blinded. And let him lose hope in everything in this world. Blind him with that gospel. Let him lose hope in everything around him. Lead him. Lead him. Lead him to that street called straight. Hallelujah. And let God do a finished work in him. Lead him to that old altar, that old straight altar. Lead him to that old black altar with nails in it. It might be bricks and boards. I remember the bricks and boards. But don't you know that folks in heaven that came by an altar, old bricks and boards, didn't have an altar. Seats. I remember we put up old army tents and with bricks, our seats with boards and bricks. Old concrete blocks, we stretch a board across it. The altar would be bricks and boards. But oh, I believe there are folks in heaven that came to them old altars that came in the more bricks and boards. Why? Because that old gospel light shined in their eyes. Oh, and it made the whole world sit right there in that old holy tent. Praise God, Sister Patsy. They, 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 they lost count of the world. They, they, didn't, they lost the world around them. It went blank. You remember those days. You yeah. sat there in that seat. You sat there and the conviction of God was on you. You lost count of everything. Everything around you was blinded. You saw hopeless in everything you had in your land, in your car, in your bank account. Nothing, oh. nothing can save me now. Nothing yes. can help me the condition I'm in. Oh, nothing can save me now. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. When that light, somebody oh. grabs your hand. That's what they're waiting on. They're waiting on out there for somebody to grab their hand and lead them to an old-fashioned altar. Preach that gospel. Shine that light in their eyes. Blind them from the cares of this world and what the world offers. And then they'll see there ain't no hope in this. I've been a fool all the while. What would you have me do, Lord? That's what Saul said. What would you have me do? Rise and go to the altar. Rise and go to a street called straight. I'm out of the hush here, where am I? Threatened last night. And I can't hold stop it from coming.